Meanwhile, back at the ranch. So the um, the Chimera is pulled up once again in front of the Harlock's Folly. Rihanna is staying nearby, ready to join you now. Looking probably visibly disturbed from what she sensed. Lord Commodore, um, there's nothing strange here. There's still, whatever it is, is still beneath, beneath us. That's a good sign. Some of the Arbites came and asked what I was out here doing. I just told them that I was here with you. Yeah, so sorry. I should have had someone else accompany you for actually some conversation. Now, let's see if we can get down there now. Everybody come. The spear just walks inside. Okay, so the four of you are obviously going. And Cade, or not? Not Cade. I'm telling Cade to guard Wally with his life. Okay, Rosen? I'm telling Rosen to guard Cade with his life. <laughs> uh, Spectre At Cell 17? Uh, if they want to accompany, they can. I'm going to quietly lean in towards the Lord Captain and say, we should use this opportunity to arrange for their deaths. They were lost in the fighting. No one would look twice here. Why? 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 Because they have a death warrant for you. Not for me. I'm not of the Harlock line. I blink and then I roll my eyes and I keep walking. You want to get shot? Yeah. Pot, if you want to get shot, you do it on your own time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're here for. You're to help me keep not get shot. I this this time I'll turn my guardian ability off. <laughs> <laughs> All what I'm is saying was... is, at the moment they don't seem to know, so just don't let them know. I think there's a there's a significant PC glance between Adrian and Nero as like Adrian kind of hefts the mouth of them a little bit. <laughs> Nero attempts this significant PC glance at Dawn to see if she's in for this plane as well. Uh, Dawn is just, you know... She's in, I guess. I mean, like, whatever needs to happen, she'll do, so... What about... Was Bryn with you as well? On the planet? Who's this? Oh, Captain Bryn. Bryn? Yeah. I think he's at the gun cutter, right? Yeah, okay. we didn't bring him in the Chimera. It would be a really okay. cramped Chimera. <laughs> it's already a really cramped Chimera. I think it's at max capacity. Okay, so once the nine of you rock up to the front, um, like you know, you get you go to the gatehouse and uh, they they see who it is and sort of wave you through, but they also radio for for Constantine to, to come and meet you. Uh, and he emerges as you're arriving at the front door. Lord Commodore, this is, uh, I didn't expect to see you again so quickly. Is Well, I believe we discovered the source of your unquiet problem. We did. Yes, I believe it's down oh. in your basement. Sorry? The source of your unquiet problem is down in your basement. I, did I not say it clear enough? He just looks around. <laughs> I heard you loud and clear, Lord Commodore. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, so you better come in and explain. What do you mean it's in our basement? My psychers have, or my warp fluent personnel, has sent something definitely of the warp here, and specifically they sensed it down below in the basement. Um, all right, then. Come with me. He... Uh, like, and he starts actually gathering up some more arbitrage. Like, okay, you know, you, you, and you, grab, grab your kit, you're coming with us. I mean, I, I put a hand on his chest and I'm just like, whoa, where are you going? Uh, well, if it's down there, we need to deal with it, right? Yeah. I gesture to all of the That's... heavily armed people standing around. I'm just like, <laughs> listen, minor league. 
Leave this to the professionals, okay? <laughs> Minor league. <laughs> if you could have dealt with this in the last 10 years, you would have. Why don't you just stay up here and, and keep all of your men alive? Because I don't feel like killing their twisted, horrifying, bloated corpses of corrupt husks. Okay, well, um, let's go then. You put them like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Okay, all right. This guy's got moxie. <laughs> he, uh, he leads you to a elevator. Um, which is clearly like part of the original structure, um, which is its own. It doesn't go up into the high levels; it only goes down into the cellar. Uh, and it's it's clearly like a transport, you know, for bringing. To, it's 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 accessible from the servants' quarters, you know. So it's to, it's to access the cellars rather than or any sort of livable areas. Um, once you're all in, uh, the elevator actually goes down a, a decent distance, probably at least sixty feet beneath the surface, um, before coming to rest in a. Uh, it opens up into a cool um, corridor. There are um, wine racks lying the walls down here. Um, you can tell from the echo that the amount of space down here is actually quite large. Even though you're coming to a corridor, you can sort of hear distant voices, um, you know, the, the sounds of, think of, think of like hospital sounds. So machinery, things going ping, um, you know, the sounds of people talking. You just try not to so, hear hospital sounds james as, as often as possible i attempt to remain away from them so uh we're here what do we do now find what is down here and destroy it all right i turned to riani who's the expert at this all right she furrows her brow and attempts to work out what she was looking for Good, good. This is the time for her to fail so that we all look around at her, put intense pressure on her. Wow, she rolled a 97. <laughs> it's, yeah. Look, I called it, she's, man. Yep, she's, it's, it's all prevailing. I, I, it's all around me. I, I can't pinpoint it exactly. Something down here. Okay. I turned to the other psyker in the group. Yeah, I was just like, we side sword and was like, hey, you, <laughs> do something useful for once. What do you want me to do? Side nisience with your mind rays to find the problem. Look, I'm a I'm a pyrokinesis, I'm a pyrokinesis, not a not a clairvoyant. So you don't have any ability to sense things around you. I, I, at this point, you can see Helos is like shaking his head. <laughs> it's, um, okay, so you, that, it's, all right, so you have no value here. All right. Rosen, I'm calling you on my comm beat. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Can you sense anything using your mind's eye? Step away from Cade if you need to. We need to pinpoint the thing in this building that's causing problems. There he does. Uh, okay, I can sense it. It's definitely beneath the building. Okay. You're going to come into the building and rendezvous with the group. <laughs> Nero, let's just start sweeping. Let's just the split area. up. No, just do we got not... one more guy. Come on, wait for this guy. If he's a bus, then we go searching. What? It's gonna take us what? One minute? Okay. Um. So Constantine takes the elevator back up again to go get him. Okay. Maybe you guys land on here. Um, ba, 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 ba. We're taking a twenty. This is what happened here. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and, and like, and, and so the psyker, you know, is is looking at like Helos is looking at the psyker, and the psyker's like, you know, what? He's like, you're such a, you're such an embarrassment. I can't, I, I just, I just, I can't even right now. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop, and with genuine concern, I'm gonna talk to the psyker and just be like, what's your name again? Lotan. Lotan. What can you actually do that I should know about going into this engagement? Um, I so he, he basically explains he's a, he's a anything with fire. He can yeah. create fire. He can. He's a combat psyker. It's all yep. it's all zap. All yep. these releases is zap. You'd okay. be great for a barbecue. What yeah. are the chances that you go out of control? I've seen psychers do it before. I've been at this a long for a long time. Okay. Ten years, in fact. <laughs> so uh, about fifty-fifty chance. Is that, yeah. is that what I'm estimating here? So, so same as same as every other cycle. 
I'm gonna stop and very seriously just be like, if something goes wrong, where would you like to be shot? He um he reaches into his uh bag mm -hmm. and pulls out a dagger, yeah, and like t turns it around so it's hilt towards you first. It's an ornate dagger. It's it's labeled with the yeah the symbol of the um like uh, Psychana. Yeah, I know what this is. Yes, if you've got to do something, then use this. I look at it and I give him a smile like that's cute, and I hold up my heavy bolter and say, "Where would you like to be shot?" Some people, they like, just remember, I did this with our last Psyker. Yes. <laughs> no, Some people, they like to leave a nice corpse. Others don't mind if their face disappears under a hail of exploding bullets. I just want to know if you turn into a demon host, what I can do for you in your final moments of agony. All right. He puts the knife away and starts ignoring you. Like, like actively looking the other way. Okay. I know it's embarrassing <laughs> to talk about your greatest failure that will happen to you in the future. All right. The other way it comes down and um, Rosen is there. All right. I tell Rosen to scan again. Okay. Let me see if I can pin it closer. Hey. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I actually didn't make a difference. Yeah. I, just... I give an incredibly <laughs> smug look towards the Lord Commodore about my 1 billion IQ plan. Adrian checks his chronometer. <laughs> go fuck yourself. I literally said that. Go, go fuck yourself, Adrian. You want to wander around the basement of a haunted police station? All right. I would hardly um, call it wandering, but. <laughs> <laughs> so he sort of starts to sense and he, and he starts walking off in one direction down the corridor. Oh, we should um, follow him. Let's go. <laughs> and he, he, he gets to the corner of the corridor. And then turns around it and then stops a few paces past the corner and then turns around and comes back to the corner and turns the corner again and, and then sort of stops and turns and um, something, there's something in this corner. And he starts, you know, like looking through the walls and the, the racks of, of wine bottles. I say, oh, yes, platform 11 and three quarters. As, uh, I think Peter just goes like, "What's around the corner?" He just goes around to look. <laughs> it's just more, more, um, more corridors. Okay, like he's, but he's saying like he's gone, he's gone around the corridor, right around the corner. And said, "Okay, I, when I go past this corner, it starts to get weaker." So it's something like whatever it is, it's it's strongest in this corner. I help him move stuff because he's small and yeah. tiny, and I'm big and okay. Early, give me, give me search rolls. Great, sure. These are things that I, as a skilled investigator and acquisitorial I agent, roll that. I got to. Really? Wow. No, I'm bad. Yeah, I'm also bad. All right. Because you're a noble pondo, I'm going to say the reason you made this is because you spotted the one bottle of wine which didn't fit in. With yeah, like, like <laughs> these, these these are all Chardonnays, and this is clearly a Merlot. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yep. This, this so, is the exact um, reason why I want to discover something. Um, and, and when you when you, <laughs> when, now, when you why would the... you put the Inter Emperor's Brandy next to the Primarchs Brew? Um, when you pull this bottle of wine, there's like a it's it's it clearly tethered to something. There's a mechanical click, and the corner of the corridor, one, one side opens out, revealing another corridor that looks to be have been untraveled for some time. Excellent. Just Pierre starts walking through. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately try to grab him so that someone else who's more <laughs> perhaps Don and Adrian, who are much less murderable than you, should go first. I mean, I survived a war boss. I should be fine. Pretty right. sure that that I stop holding him back. Too. If he wants to do the big boy pants thing, I, I even give him a little push forward. I'm like, you're right, sir. You're incredibly powerful and nothing will ever stop you. Excellent. It just keeps right, walking. So, so, so as you're entering this corridor, from, from behind you, another couple of arbitres turn up along with a couple of guys who are wearing like mortician's smocks, like with, you know, with the blood splatter and everything as well. Um, and, and Constantine sort of like waves them off, like you know it's under control. They, they've obviously heard the noise of the of the concealed door opening and have come to investigate, but he he waves them off. Um, so I look at Adrian because goes... you look like you you're having a moment. Uh, no, I just had the realization of that there were people operating something down here, some sort of uh, med tent or. Okay. 
Uh, the corridor goes about 30, me- 30, 30, meters, 30 feet straight ahead before there is a door on the left and the corridor continues ahead into darkness as well. Um, it, it's at a gradual downward slope. Um, the door on the left has got multiple um, hexagramic and pentagramic wards drawn on the door. Um, I will get, take Forbidden Law Inquisition at plus 10. I mean, regardless, it sounds like a uh, door we don't want to touch. Or we're absolutely going to touch or it. Do you want to realize touch. that. Yeah, this is true. It's been okay, <clears throat> 2.6. All right. I will fate. You say it a minus something? It's a plus 10. Oh, plus, 10. plus 10. Well, no, I still fail. But by a lot. Okay, so um, Pierre and Dawn both recognize that these symbols are ones that the Inquisition would use in the form of um, binding a demon, where, where a demon cannot be destroyed, it's instead been bound. Um, although, Dawn, with your four degrees as well, especially because of your area of knowledge, you recognize that some of the way this has been set up is particular to the stylings of the Order Dialogus within the, um, the Battle Sisters or within the, within the Adeptus Sororitas. So the honest I know just uh, study forbidden law so that others don't have to. So there is definitely, you, you pick up like a, 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 it's both inquisitorial, but it's also sororitas, this binding. So like Miriam. Uh, yeah, like so Miriam's previous uh, experience. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let the Lord Captain know that this is sororitas work and that whatever's behind here is probably pretty intense. All right, I immediately so, begin taking my ammunition belt out and putting the belter's holy ammunition clip in. So the other question is, does it appear that any of the seals have been broken or frayed? They've no. been weakening. No, they're, they're, in, they're intact. Maybe this is in our room. Maybe not. Maybe not right now. Are you sure, sir? I just loaded the good ammunition. Well, keep the good ammunition in. Because there's probably still some more. It's incredibly rare, find. sir. It's then don't shoot anything other than a demon with it. You have a second gun. You actually have like three other guns on you. All right, I get my missile tube out. <laughs> That's my new not that. <laughs> Christ. Yeah, why it's like we're in a yes. car and we're underground here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the missile tube. Why'd you bring that in here? It's precision weapon, sir. It's precision weapon, not. You're a... Point blank. It's these, cor- these, <laughs> these corridors are about six feet wide. You know. Yeah. So they're not the very sniper, big. The sniper said it's okay. He never misses. Yeah, exactly. He's not going to miss all of us. I'm not <laughs> worried about it missing. I'm worried about it exploding. What's more important than collapsing a building on top of your enemies? Not collapsing not on top there. of us. Well, exactly. Thank you, Lord Commodore. <sighs> I look at the missile tube and I put it back on my back and then I go, I wish Cade was here. And then I swap my ammunitions again. Tony had the samurai style where you couldn't draw a weapon that, without using it. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> he just, boom, throws a missile down his that... door. <laughs> what was that from Babylon 5? The Narn Honor Knife? You, this, this knife cannot be sheathed again without being drenched in blood. Do not worry, brother. Your words are blood enough. <sighs> Babylon 5 what? fans, so what I'm okay. talking about. All right, so, so I switch ign- back ignoring... to the original bolter situation, and I'm just like, yep, because this bolter in a corridor full of people is going to be more effective than a rocket launcher. Yes. So we're ignoring the demon door and continuing on the corridor? I mean, I, for now. We're ignoring <laughs> everyone else may now. be ignoring it. I am not. <laughs> We'll note its so, presence. Note that it should be okay. If I'm gonna turn to Helos and be like, "Hey, you, you people, who's you know." And then I look at the uh, Arbutes, so I'm not like, "Hey, you inquisitorial acolytes," <laughs> right? I'm just like, "Hey, you people." Wink. Tell me about this door. You good with it? Those seals holding up. Um. So there, Saga looks at it. So uh, look, as far as I know, these wards should stop whatever this is from getting out, but its influence will still spread. 
This is, I don't want to say novice work, but it's certainly not this. Yeah. Let me say no one from the classical side can't do this. This is, this is like lay person inquisitor type stuff. So you think we should get someone out here to reinforce it? Um, well, I think that we should. What's your suggestion? There, so. What's your suggestion? We, well, if we if we've got the ability to stop, to destroy what's in there, then we don't have to worry about it anymore at all. This is like a band aid on a on a on an uncauterized wound. So you think we should burst in there and kill whatever's inside, even though it was trapped in here on purpose? Yeah, I do. I'm gonna look at Helos. Does Helos agree with the Psyker? Helos a bit less convinced. Um, you know, this is really out of outside of his wheelhouse of knowledge. He's sort of he is relying somewhat on the Psyker to give him advice and things of the warp, but is also not ready to toss over the demon necessarily. Okay, now I look at Rosen and Riani to give us the <laughs> final ver Listen, man, I don't know shit about the war. I I'm just looking to get every voice in here, okay? I love that Nero switched to the holy ammo. Switched back from the holy ammo. Now he's switching I'm back into it. Back to the holy ammo. <laughs> it's like a whole process, dude. Just like, yeah, he's got to unhook the belt, like pull the browns out, like... <laughs> Feed the new round. Because you know he it's like special packed. He special packed the holy ammunition. That mm. way, it makes sure it's one hundred percent safe. And now he's got to unpack it. <clears throat> it's in. Uh, a, it's in a magazine hanging on the front of my armor. It's not so specially does, packed. From what their psyker described, does that sound like it would check out? Like it, it's sealed, but its influence can still leak out. I like Ariani because that was kind of what she said had happened. Yeah, well, certainly Rosen goes past and determines that the, the, the what he senses gets lighter as you go down the corridor. So it's whatever it is doing this is coming from this room. So this is our room then. Sir, okay. I hate to be very Katy Perry, but uh, it seems like we were hot and now we're cold. I'm going to turn back towards the room. Do you have your, your holy ammo in? Yes, I do, sir. Okay, I'll open the door. You can go through. Uh, You can open the door and Don and Adrian and sword guy will go through and then the rest of us will go through and i look at the arbitate guy who came down here with his boys are they <laughs> carrying right, it, it, swords or are they carrying guns no well so so first off he he's uh, only constantly he sent the rest of his guys away he has okay. a bolt pistol out Pierre just opens the door at this point oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> nero flows into the room okay um the room itself isn't huge Probably only about nine feet by twelve feet. Ah, so um, definite. Don't want to be in the room with a rocket launcher situation. Got it. Um, it's set up like some sort of workshop. You know, so that there's tool benches on on either side. There are multiple books and and piles of different age scrolls that have been like some have been laid out on benches with like weights put on to hold them down. Uh, I mean, once again, no one's been in here a long time, so everything is covered in a thick layer of dust. Uh, so the two most interesting features of the room, one of them is a mirror, a full size, like a, a, a dressing mirror uh, in a gilt frame uh, that you can see that the glass has like a fracture pattern through it, like it's been broken, but every piece has been put back in place uh, in the mirror. Um, the second thing in the room is interesting is on the other side of the room on a bench is effectively like a, um, a cork board, um, on which into, onto which is pinned the, um, like still moist looking flesh of a demonic face. Okay. Nero goes into the room and immediately clears the door, moves to the left corner. He's looking at the left corner using his robot gun that's hooked into yep. his brain while pointing his gun at the face and okay. waiting for further orders. Okay. The eyes open up and it hisses at you. Okay. Does it do anything warpy though? <laughs> Other than the fact that it's like, it's just a disembodied sheet of flesh, which is now yes. has, has working eyes and it's hissing at you, you know. I just thought, sir. <laughs> I had to peer interest in. I think he... You said that the mirror was broken, right? No, it's been re, reforged. Reforged. Well, I mean, it's like it's it's still cracked. It's just all the pieces are held in by right. by tension with other every other piece and gravity. 
And no missing pieces? No, everything is there completely. You can see the Sagacity's piece. It's signed in the upper right-hand corner. <laughs> it is. The Sagacity's piece is definitely there. Yeah. Um. So once uh, I need to make a check for the Arbiter. Actually, I need to make a check for him. It doesn't work for you. Okay, so give me a sec. Constantine. I think I'm the only ones really, well, except for the... I'm jaded. I don't know. Passes. You're jaded. Are you, well, you guys have got immunity of fear. Yes. Well, I, does jaded work for warp stuff? I thought it only worked yes. for... Like, uh, no, no, only for over natural, over natural. Actually, you're, so you're not immune to your own... You don't get your own aura, do you? So you need to test. <laughs> no, no, yeah. No, I, it's the common uh, Pierre situation where he helps everybody else, but he can't help himself. Okay, so it's a willpower test at minus 10. Uh, it doesn't sound fun. <laughs> That sounds the opposite of fun. Oh, well, all right. Uh, okay. Okay, well, every everybody on there, everybody from Spectre Team 17 except for the Psyker fails. That's okay. Right. That's that you know what? If there okay. was one person we needed to succeed. So they, they rolled low on the shock table though. So they are they are un clearly uncomfortable. And so like like keeping distance from like but like watching from the door ready to still act. But are, are you all alright? I, I feel like you'd be trained to handle the situation. It's just a talking face. I think it's talking. <laughs> are you talking? <laughs> it's, it's just... it, 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 yeah, when you when you ask that, it's like, who are you? Ah, see, talking face. <laughs> I am Pierre Cows. This is my entourage. Who may you be? I am, and then it spits out like a long line of syllables that I couldn't even try and produce. That actually, like, it hurts your ears to hear hear these words spoken. Mm -hmm. I'm just um, going to call you Jerry for now. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Okay. So, what's caused you to be so cranky as of late? I, I am trapped here in this mortal form. I presume it's from the reforging of the mirror. It looks at the mirror. Who are you really, mortal? I, I, Lord Commodore What's your Pierre name? I... <clears throat> you come are here you... without fear. You come here with reeking of purpose. Yes. Why are you here? To figure out what's the cause of the whole Walking Dead situation, which liar, what liar, what <laughs> you have other reasons, and that's the stink of destiny I sense upon your soul. <laughs> I sense that you have four I think he destiny starts, points. Like, himself. <laughs> yeah, that really should be just rose, but. <laughs> I guess Move, Destiny moves, also works. Moves to a point in the room where he can cover the, the Inquisitorial team. They're outside in the corridor. And I'm not they out like there. So. Spooked. Do you want to get the Psyker at least. Do you serve the marionette? I can sense her touch upon you. Tell her I am loyal. Tell her I await her summons, her rescue. I will not betray her. Even if I did work for the marionette, I don't believe she has a use for a talking face. <laughs> it looks as offended <laughs> as a talking face pinballed to a wall can look. <laughs> I, oh God, I look at you, Pierre, and I give you a significant PC glance towards my Angelique Cal's action figure when he starts talking about a female marionette. Oh, you must be talking about my mother. Yes. No, 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 you're missing. <laughs> your sister. I think it might be your sister. I'm not saying it out loud, though. <laughs> no, the, the marionette is something else. We don't know that for sure. Yeah, it definitely could be your sister at this point. Your place. sister yeah. could absolutely be the Damon host that's riding in, for sure. As, but you're like, my mother, and I'm like, no, no. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Thanks, like, I'm like Valley to him. Oh, uh, 
Yes, there was a, I believe someone here about 10 years ago that you probably could have met, I believe. I think Pierre like turns, look at the mirrors, like put that piece of the mirror back into place. Her and her friends put the return the entire mirror. I tried to devour their souls, but they bested me. Yet they could not destroy me. So that's why you're only a face. Interesting. So what did the mirror have to do with your binding? I was once trapped within the mirror, trapped by the foul creature known as Erasmus Harlock. <gasps> Everybody gasps. <laughs> so it's like near only gas. <laughs> Man, it seems like he gets around around these places sometimes. <clears throat> so he binds you there. Somehow the mirror got broken. They put it back together. Now you're a face. They 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 vainly thought they could destroy me once I was free of the mirror. Ah, but well. I am eternal. I don't know if eternity as a face is one worth living. Stuck you in can't, a... You can't understand eternity in your mortal form. Your life is fleeting. Star, stars die faster in my perceptions than your pathetic existence. James, let me ask you a question. Do we know yes. whether demons can actually feel fear? Um, so they can... So probably the thing they fear the most is absolute destruction like normally yeah. if, if a demon's destroyed in the, in the mortal realm it goes this goes back to um the the the, uh, the warp um and they certainly fear more powerful demons as well all right i want to flex yeah. on this thing okay no you know worries. you know i'm all about intimidation and i say yeah, okay. i am nero julius augustus bullet of the hand of calixus and i have caused the true death of the daemon strizgeth flesh flayer Hear my words and know that they are true, demon. We will eliminate you as easily as we dispatched that foul thing. I think Pierre goes to look at the uh, the mirror to see if there's any sort of maybe etchings into it that might hint at some sort of name. Evil connections. I mean, it told us its name. Well, I mean, it, like its true name, essentially. I think it told us its true name. Anyway, yeah, I'm trying to flex on this guy and make him feel okay. afraid. Give me an internet test at minus 10. Minus 10? Not... Yeah, well, it, it would have been a lot worse if you hadn't come up with a lot of that stuff you just said. It would have been minus... You, you got up from minus 30. Okay. Don't complain. <laughs> as, as you try to intimidate <laughs> the flesh of a face. <laughs> All right. So I, there's not much you can intimidate a talking face, okay? The minus 10 comes to minus 15 because this is a non-combat topic. The ship... Uh, I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna call it a combat topic. Yeah, you just said okay. we were going to destroy it. All right, I'll yeah. buy that. All right, I get a plus yeah. 15 for the ship, so... Um, well, it doesn't know you're from the Hand of Calixus. I, <laughs> I introduced myself as being from the Hand of Calixus. I didn't hit, I didn't hit sorry, not sure. I didn't hear you say the ship name. That's right, I'll I, take it. I said all that say, at the I'm beginning. Just... I said, I'm in the Hand of Calixus. Listen, yeah. I, well, I wanted to make sure that when I made this roll, I was going in there with the big bonuses. Um, yeah. Okay, so that ends up being a plus five, Intimidate. Here it, uh, is. Here it is, folks. The, yeah. the, the one time Nero, Nero <laughs> actually gets to roll okay. on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, if I buy an additional success, will that get me anything interesting? Um. No, so let's leave this one for okay. now. All right. I, I, I don't. I don't want to take a fight point from you for the purpose of just taking a fight point. I'd rather. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, why I asked. Know. I knew you wouldn't just take it from me. No worries. Yeah. Uh, Feel free. Uh, in, in, in other news, lose a fight point. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it does, you know, as, as cowed as a face can look um, with just its facial expression, it does sort of like, you know, like its features recall from you somewhat like, you know, uh, like a flower wilting towards the sun. There is, there is a foul odor of fate about all four of you. And so, like, yeah, Rihanna's like, hey! <laughs> it's, it's like it doesn't even see her. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> oh, she, actually, no, she's got fate points, sorry. She's got fate points, so she'll say all five of you then. Yeah. We'll say, 
Yeah, she's gonna she gets side character. Does that? Sound <laughs> <laughs> but I sense the marionette's hand upon the four of you. Was the marionette but, among the ones who trapped you here? No, the marionette did not exist then. Not in the form that you can understand. Uh, but you are Drew, you are indeed a powerful mortal, Nero Augustus Julius Bullet. Thank you. I will serve you. Oh, I look at the alert captain and like, can I kill it now? Like <laughs> I mean, you could try to shoot a face, but I don't know if shooting a face will do much. All right. I mean, obviously, I a don't dude. want a demon serving me. I'm just like, rest of the room, what do we do here? Like, I'd love to cause this thing's true death, but it seems like maybe we have some questions. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I hold my hand up to the face. I'm like, sorry, I'm actually not afraid of you, unlike everybody else. Do uh, I um, find any honest, interesting? So, sorry, so you... So, so the mirror itself doesn't have any sort of um, names on it, but you do feel that like the the work of the mirror is similar in style to the work of the clockworks you found in Qantas. So it's not a clockwork device, but it's like clearly by the same maker. Definitely by his hand. Erasmus yeah. Harlock. Um, yeah. Riani picks up something from the table and offers it to Pierre. Um, it appears to be some sort of document folder, like a vellum document folder, um, with an inquisitorial symbol on it of the Order Hereticus. Damn it, she's leading me on. <laughs> she planned it 10 years in advance. Hello, yeah, brother. Guess... <laughs> uh, Pierre will open it up and kind of search through. Okay. Uh, so effectively, it's like an inquisitorial action report. Um, and it is it is signed by Acolyte Ephesae. Um, seems to indicate that... Uh, when investigating the murders in this world, they found it linked to this mirror. Um, they thought that bringing the pieces of the mirror back together might give them more clues to what was actually going on and inadvertently released a demon, which although they were able to destroy most of its mortal form, um, the, the two things that would not be destroyed were its voice or its face. Um, and literally the, uh, the, op the options were like, secure it here and, and send someone back later to gather it or take it with her at the time. And at the time she was like, I'm, it's, it's, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it here. Ward this room as best I can and tell someone about this. So someone can come and deal with it. Um, and that's basically what the report, like if, if you find this report, hopefully you're the, you're the team that was sent to deal with this. Um, but it just details what had happened here. So Anything on the it, it, does, it does mention that the face is incredibly forthcoming with answering questions. So right. like she did, she really did like like her and the other acolytes did debate over taking the face because, you know, it, it had a lot of knowledge, but it would in the end they decided no, it's too it's too dangerous to take this with us. Right. Yeah. I, I ask the face and I say, who is the marionette? The marionette itself is a a demon older than time, but uh, now now it has found a mortal form. Mm -hmm. and it commands fate in this part of the galaxy. Yep. Tell me it more prepares. about that mortal form. Uh, so it gives you a whole bunch of like really flowery stuff about, you know, it is you know, someone truly great, someone of, you know, manifest destiny and such. And you realize that it's talking its way around. It doesn't know. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. It doesn't, so it doesn't know who the mortal form is. It's just like trying to impress you with, how, how amazing this person must be for the marionette to have selected it. So this person could be the most mutated person alive and you have no idea is what I'm understanding. I know what the person would be like. Is the marionette the a demon host then? That's what you're saying. It's riding in a... Is, no, the marionette is a greater demon. Yes, but it's riding and in a mortal form. Host. Yes. Yep. Yes. So it's riding yeah, around in a human. Yep. <clears throat> Okay. And, and how long ago did this marionette decide to ride in a mortal form? Uh, in your lifetimes. <sighs> <it's, laughs> uh, so it, 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 
maybe 10 years, maybe nine years. You know, it, it's like, it, it doesn't really think of time in the same way you do, but it you know, equates yep. it to a... Go back to that thing about life. the marionette gathering things. You said fate or power or maybe fleets. I cut you off there. What were you saying? The marionette will wipe clean this galaxy of okay. mortal yep. no, no, no. flesh. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> Yeah, think on the lip. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. I do not get within arm's reach of it. The, the marionette. Do you know what she's trying to gather? Do you know of her plans at the moment, or you just been so far out of the loop that you have no idea? She is threatened by other agents of the of the great gods that seek to reach and destroy your pitiful home world for uh, their actions will fail, but it will weaken chaos in the process. She plans to sweep all of their pitiful crusades aside so that she may lead the one great crusade that will end all life. Oh. With what means? It's, it basically starts to rattle off about how, how fantastic the yeah. power forces of the Dark Gods are. With like, what means before I start having Nero throw holy bolter browns down your non-existent she, throat? The, the marionette commands legions of demons. So it it's has, been locked up here since before the marionette took mortal form. It literally knows nothing of value. That's what I'm unfortunately <clears throat> trying to not I don't think we should race with. the holy boulder rounds. So I'm pretty sure Don could just banish this thing, sir. Specialty, right? <laughs> Don, you're not so, sure of this? I believe in you, Don. Well, the issue is that they didn't really. I, does the report say they tried to banish him or just tried to slay his more? Don, his Don is literally a demon excommunication specialist, though, yeah. right? This is literally her whole job. Yeah, so. At this point in time, when FSA was here or Evangeline was here, she was more of a, a she was here as on behalf of the Auto Hereticus, not the Auto Malleus, not really a demon expert. Um, okay. If you, if banishment is possible, though, it wouldn't destroy the demon; just put, just mm -hmm. push it back into the warp, yeah. weaken it severely, you know. But it would still, it would, it would continue to exist. So, what kind of conditions do we need to destroy this thing permanently? I mean, I feel like we've kind of got it. We we nailed need to a board, so to speak. It's very difficult to just to permanently destroy a demon, though. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, not everyone can be destroyed as good as Strizgeth Flesh Flayer. So the reason Strizgeth, Stri well, okay. Oh, A Adrian wouldn't know that, so I can't tell you. Riani, who doesn't have forbidden law demonology, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, pops in with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this feels like a false dozen <laughs> yeah <laughs> go on so this thing is only harmful here because it's on a terrestrial world it, uh, its influence extends to the city around it couldn't we just throw it into space somewhere somewhere like uh, drop it somewhere in the void between stars an excellent suggestion. Is it? Nero, Nero so. nods like, is it? Okay. Seems legitimate answer to me. Alright, doesn't that mean it will have a few minutes to temporarily infect our ship, though? We just get some gnolls and have them stand right next to the guy. <laughs> is that painful for you, Damon? Is being near a gnoll hurt you? It, 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 I... I... You're no, incredibly forthcoming, no. right? <laughs> no, well, it just it doesn't know what a null is. It doesn't have a concept for that. Okay, you're gonna have a very fun yeah. experience <laughs> just, here in a second. I was uh, just like, sir, well, do we still have that in the it, the cargo hold of the eternal praetorium? Oh yes, we still have quite a few of those. We also da, 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 have da, 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 paid. Yeah, before... well, yes, yes, but I'm not trying to be like, yeah, we have a fuck ton of nulls on board oh, okay. our ship in front of the fucking inquisitorial team. <laughs> no, uh, we at least have Cade. Yes, of course. Yeah. All right, I call Caden and have him come down here. Before before okay. we dispose of this thing, is there anything else we would like to ask it? Yeah, hey, is there anything else we should know? 
You're very forthcoming. <laughs> what's what's the one question you don't want me to ask you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, can you tell us what your true name is? Yeah. Uh, you, what, your 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 beauty minds couldn't comprehend it. Yeah, what, that's oh, what rhyming. Strizgeth Flat Flare thought too. <laughs> <laughs> what Please do you know me. of um, Erasmus Harlock? <gasps> I gasp again. Did you serve him? I was forced for a time to be a witness and a part of his experiments. Of what sort? He sought to change your universe and mine to roll back the wheels of time and alter that which has been. And how did he plan to do so? He tied it to something he called Comus, the dark star, the tyrant sun. And he spoke and of a machine wrought from your material and mine, an impossible shape, a tesseract. And why is it that he bound you to the mirror? So that I was forced to serve him. I see. Seems like you'll just I serve would... anybody. <laughs> no, I am loyal to my master. You just offered to serve me less than 10 minutes ago. Yes, you are my master. No, I'm definitely not. <laughs> Nero, why don't you ask him his true name? Yeah, what's your true name? <laughs> <laughs> come come closer, master, and I will tell you. All right, I'm going to turn to Constantine and be like, hey, one of my expert demonologists is coming. I need you to go get him from the elevator. Okay, he goes to do that. All right, I check his pants <laughs> to see if he peed himself during this conversation. Uh, no, no, but yeah. He's All right, he's walking away. I say, man, it's a good yep. man. Yep. He's the, he's the, the 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 sweat is sticking to his brow though, despite it being quite cool and drafty down here. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the uh, inquisitorial team and be like, "Hey, you guys got any questions you want to ask this thing before we cause it intense torture for a few hours and then eject it into the darkness of the void?" Maybe does it know where Harlock is? And it isn't Harlock dead. Well, that's no one's seen a body. I, I, mean, just assume he's, he's been... I, I look around and I'm just like, I don't know about you guys in the inquisitorial acolyte teams, but there are plenty of people I've killed that I did not leave a body for. Demon, <laughs> where is Erasmus Harlock? He entered the Tesseract and he failed the marionette's test. Wait, why is the marionette no. testing him inside his own device? He did not create the Tesseract. Oh. The Tesseract has always been... Plot twist. Well, isn't the Tesseract separate from the Tyrant Star? Yes. The, te the Tesseract was a way he hoped to control the Tyrant Star. Okay. But the, So the marionette is tied to the Tesseract, not to the Tyrant Star. Right. So is the Tyrant Star the thing that, that Harlock created? No, oh, he was, no, it existed before him. Okay. Yeah. He was just trying to use it to uh, basically turn back time and, and save us and realive his family. So he created the Tesseract? He didn't create no. any of these things. He was just like, oh, he there's a Tyrant Star. That. I'm going to use this Tesseract to control it. And the Tesseract yeah. was like, I'm actually the marionette. Blah. Yeah. All right. So... It's it's late. We need to get Dave to bed. But while I'm True. just going to paraphrase this. Effectively, what the what this thing tells about the tesseract and and Harlot's interest in it is effectively that the tesseract is like the equivalent of a genie in a bottle. It's capable. It is, it is effectively it grants desire, um, and you know Harlock didn't really understand what his desire was before he went in, and the tesseract con the tesseract and bike sent to the marionette consumed him from it. Hmm. Okay. 
Sounds like he's pretty dumb. I kind of want to keep this thing because we have Knowles to keep this thing in check. All right. As soon as, oh, as, soon as Kaiden... boy. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, as... Lord Commodore, that I can give you five different plays where that is a bad idea. Uh, as soon as Kate enters the room, the face is like, what are you doing? What is that? It's like it can't even perceive Cade, but it somehow knows that there's something inherently bad for it going on. Well, that's going to be your babysitter Stop for it. now. Right. It starts like screaming a pitiful scream like a, a cat being flayed. That just is that. <laughs> that just sounds sick. Not so pitiful, but sure. Okay, Kate. I need you to pick okay. up the cork it sounds board like that your things... cat being flayed. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Kate, pick up the cork board and carry the thing back to the shuttle with us. All right. <laughs> should we? Should we like uh, throw actually... something over it so that no yeah, one asks it in any like questions? An ammo box or something. So it's less, not as loud. Maybe with the piece I, of cloth. I go. Muslet. If only I'd brought the thrice locked chest of near the blade. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, I just look for a cloth or a box somewhere in this workshop to throw over it. All right. Um, Riani, Riani says, may I try something? Right. Do you mind? Uh, she, put, she puts on her gloves and she pulls the pin out of the pin board and like peels the face off the off the cork and then and then rolls it up like a piece of burnished leather. <laughs> and and, and like, the voice is like... <laughs> <laughs> What are we gonna put it in a scroll case now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, Reality, I looked at the inquisitorial brilliant. team because they had <laughs> scrolls earlier, and I'm like, "Hey, yes. why don't you fork over the scroll case?" Okay. One of the producers, uh, the right. case, uh, do you? you know, uh, as Zero is like carefully handing it to Riani, he's like, "In all my life on Katie, I never thought I'd be transporting a tamed daemon." Inside of a scroll case we found in the basement of our potato's precinct. Right, um, Riani said the point. Maybe we should take the rest of these books here. Then, what they, some of these are Harlocks. I agree. They, they might tell. I us think more. Pierre's already taking the books. I'm just yeah. like, uh, maybe we should burn it, sir. Maybe. Riani, is this actually going to stop all the undead from coming back to the city? I'd say if we remove this, then yes. All right, good enough for me. Look at us. We did a great deed today. Inquisitorial team, you did a good job carrying the scroll case. You were a credit to your organization. If you uh, see any of those descendants of Harlock, you'd be sure and take care of them. And the Sinos, what yep. traitors. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll stay here and clean up after this. and hope, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll report this back to my master. Yeah. Maybe he'll summon us again. Maybe he won't. We'll see. Who is we, your master, by yeah, the way? Yeah, who is your master? We should report to them to give it's, the, you know, like a quality report on how good you were. Definitely. Let's maybe remind him that you're here because he might have forgotten. I, I can't say. Well, that's unfortunate for you. I just Blink once if it's Saltavon. <laughs> I, I just went to Pierre and I'm just like, doesn't he outrank you? He may too, but I can't say. Do you literally mean you can't say? Yes. Ah, I understand now. I turn to one of the other ones and say, okay, <laughs> same deal for you, or can I beat yeah. it out of you? I can't say. You, I, I, you... I, 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 once all four of them say, I can't say. Yeah, all right. I turn to Dave and I go, all right, let's wrap this up. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. Sorry. It's nah, all right. you're, you're good, man. You, you had you had bones pulled out of your face a couple days ago. Wow, that's yeah. it's, it. Sounds so much worse when you put it like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's that's, terrible. That's what so it you, is, though. Anybody that wants to you can add uh, demon face to their inventory list. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna pass on that one. Yep, me too. <laughs> I got it. And 300 XPs. <laughs> demon face. <laughs> demon face. <laughs> This, this has been a, a, a uh, bizarre plastic. <laughs> Did you get his um, true name, by the way? Uh, no, it, it, offered, it offered to tell Nero, but he didn't lean in to be told. 
Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. Mostly <laughs> because I like my low corruption level. <laughs> yeah. He didn't lean in to make that willpower check to not get corruption. <sighs> I don't um, want terrorists as a word, man. Pierre, what what is that? What what is the ability that you have that lets us ignore fear when we're around you? Uh, into the jaws of hell. Okay. Okay. It has to be for people that are under you, though. Yeah. So you so, couldn't so get. I it. couldn't get it and and help you out because no. I'm not in charge of you. No, I'm just I'm just forever cursed to being. I can help everybody hey, else, but I'm just cursed. that's that's the main character curse, my friend. <laughs> I have to wait until I mean, Dawn activate her thing to be like, all right, you're not yeah. afraid anymore. Dave, let's see your outro. Hey, I'm Dave. I'm a sleepy boy. Uh, you might find me sleeping. Uh, most likely not. But uh, yeah, make sure you follow all my social media. Uh, sleepy boy at 69 at Twitter and... Uh, uh stop it don't wake me up i'm tired um on facebook i guess i don't know um yes yeah, interesting game i like where this is headed uh, i'm like the last couple of games have just been fucking checked out like super fucking hard though so i i apologize for that it's just yeah just one of those things for me so uh but yeah you, say, you get one less hour of sleep tonight because your clocks are going forward Joy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Incredible. You know, speaking of that, Ponder the Mad. I am Ponder Upon the Mad. You can find me here on Saturday nights with Rogue Trader. Um, You can look up my stuff on YouTube at Ponder on YouTube.com slash Ponder the Mad. Eventually, I might get back into streaming on twitch.tv slash bond the mad uh at the moment i'm still getting ready to start moving so it'll be a little bit before i get anything else going but uh is it next week we don't have an episode it's next correct because mm-hmm. i'm moving that day and i think there's i think james it's, is doing something it's, well it's easter sunday for me that day so i'll be yeah letting my kids about, put eggs in the garden what about the following week after that are we playing then i'm good then should be good then okay. by that time i should definitely have uh, so, yeah. internet so i should have to have internet and my actual office set up just so. tether your phone i have joined one of arthur's games tethered to a mobile phone before yes to a cell phone sorry rad has I done a too. whole entire game <laughs> in his car <laughs> i i i did i did a game tethered to a phone actually it was a rug trader game tethered to a phone all right, the hotel that time. That's right. I remember that. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the quality yeah. was not great. Yep. <laughs> Incredible. Got anything else, Pondo? Uh, no, that's it. That's it for now. It was a fun night. Very interesting. <laughs> so nice when demons are so trustworthy and forthright. Yes. We can surely trust everything it had to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. You might. It's just he seems like a very gullible. Well, I, or uh, so I feel like this guy was a a he was pretty low on the totem pole as far as demons yeah. go. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of someone low on the demon totem pole, Adrian. Yeah, that's true. Low, low to non-existent. Uh, I am Big Spoon uh, or Big Spoon two two three. You can find me over on Twitter at. Big Spoon 223. Uh, I'm on Arthur's Discord. I am here on Saturday nights for Rogue Trader. Um, and then I'm also on Solaris nights uh, and uh, may or may not be doing another guest spot on Oath of Endo Steel whenever the, the end of that season comes around. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, if you want to uh, hit me up, shoot me a message on the Discord or something. That's pretty much it. Okay. Grim Dark James. I am Grim Dark James. I had a good time tonight running this game as well. Henley, thank you for fight, for fighting through as best you could your uh, your your, uh, your pain. Uh, oh, I will be back sorry. here maybe on uh, on Wednesday for Cyberpunk Work Dependent, uh, and then I'll be back the following week definitely for Cyberpunk and for Rogue Trader um, after Easter is done. Uh, otherwise, find me on other Discord. 
Uh, and I'm also looking, putting out my little car mechanics in the stream. So you can learn every, everything you want to know about why rotary engines suck, in my opinion. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll uh, see you next time. That's it. I have no outro to add. Have a good night, guys. Bye. See ya.